the dirty secrets behind wind power. Wind turbines will devastate a community. All the arguments for the Green Energy Act turned out to be phony. The largest scam we have ever heard. How a liberal green dream turned into a nightmare. We tried so hard to stop what happened to us. What on earth is happening? My God, what are you people thinking? The hidden victims. We wanted to protect our families. It's like ripping my heart out. The mysterious health problems. Severe migraines, severe depression. I have heart attacks sometimes. Lives turned upside down. How dare they make me leave my home? We have a government that's not protecting their citizens. Their rights stomped on. They took away their planning powers. In the mad dash to ramp up wind power. Why the push and why the rush? The Green Energy Act just allows for areas to be obliterated by turbines. The rise of a rural backlash. This is our fight, this is our community against a green-obsessed government. They all sat down with Environmental Defense, David Suzuki Foundation. This is not green. It's ridiculous. The massive cost. They don't run on wind. They run on subsidies. So much money has been spilled here. For a system that doesn't make any sense. It is not profitable. It's not cost-effective. The inside connections. The wind turbine companies are side by side with the Liberal government. How some Liberals are making a bundle off big win. A lot of Liberal insiders are benefiting from these contracts. We are not going to hold us full as cancel those contracts. Will they turn back? Too much invested to admit the error. Who thought it could happen in Canada? I say fight like hell. Fight like hell. Along the shores of Lake Huron, in small towns and farming communities, roots run deep and working the land is a labor of love. But for many people here, a fog of misery has set in. I cry every day. I cry every day. My heart is broken beyond belief. Norma Schmidt's home used to be her castle. Well, it was the labor of love. This, this was a home, a dream home, 13 acres that my husband had bought before we married in 1978. I moved here in 1979. We've moved the staircase from one side of the house totally over to the other side of the house. Over the years, the Schmitz lovingly restored the 150-year-old farmhouse and raised a family here in the community of Underwood, northwest of Toronto. Total new cupboards. Each room was our dream was our vision for what we wanted it to be. The outside was what we wanted it to be, what we dreamt our grandchildren would love it to be. After a long career in nursing, Norma was looking down the road to retirement and reaping the rewards of a life of hard work and giving. But everything changed after the wind developers came calling. We we're told that this was good for the environment, it was free, it was good for our community, and we believed the bill of goods that we were sold. It is the largest scam we have ever heard in our lives. In the nearby community of Ripley, school teacher Sandy McLeod was also open to the idea of wind turbines, at least at first. I phoned my council member, uh, I phoned Jim Hanna, and I said to him, I asked him I straight up, I said, Jim, what, what's going on here? And he said, Sandy, the provincial government wants these things, and it doesn't matter what we do, we just, uh, they're going to come no matter what we do. And they arrived en masse to communities all along the Lake Huron shore and elsewhere in the province. The arrival of wind turbines changed the face of Ontario's countryside forever. It was under the Ontario Liberal government's green-obsessed watch that the first wind mega-projects were approved in short order and construction got started. But in the Liberals' mad dash to ramp up wind power, were affected communities properly consulted and given a say? Were they aware and did they care about the potential health effects for people who lived close to the turbines? People like Sandy McLeod? I always thought that the professionals who 
were going to allow this project and set, set up the safety recommendations for this project would have done their professional due diligence. We asked about what would happen to our health. As the turbines went up, those concerns grew and the beginnings of a rural backlash began. Sandy's home ended up almost surrounded by the turbines. And soon, she and members of her family started feeling sick. We had significant blood pressure changes, ringing in the ear, constant. And, and it, the, the ringing was intense, like it felt like as if, as if somebody was taking a Q-tip and just shoving it in your ear. Your heart would pound and neighbours would complain of headaches that they'd never had before. The symptoms were so, so extreme and so severe. She says the noise this noise was unrelenting. So just what would it be like to live in the shadow of these mammoth turbines? To get an idea of just how big industrial wind turbines are, you've really got to get up close. From 300 up to 500 feet tall, that's 50 stories that this wind turbine reaches up to. And when it comes to the blades, well, they're as wide as a 747. Oh, it's, it's difficult. I haven't opened these in, in years. Right from day one, Sandy kept a meticulous diary of what was happening to her family's health. We had been five months sleep deprived. Turbines cycling very high, high pitch ringing, right ear, ringing hard chest pounding. I'm feeling very sad, very tired, trying to get some sleep, ears ringing, turbines sound like jets. So that's in May of 2008. We were like mama bears and papa bears. We wanted to protect our families. Some people had lived in that area their entire life. The road we lived on, one of the ladies had lived there her whole life. And she had never experienced this ever. We tried so hard to stop what happened to us. Sandy's friend and neighbor, Kim Calling, watched helplessly while others whispered. There were five families who were very severely affected by the turbines. There were a few people around the area that said it was all in their heads. It was almost like it was the, those families were alone in a little pack and no one else was helping them. Every day we were like, we were like lab animals being tested on. The Ripley Wind Farm Project split the community between landowners who signed contracts to take the turbines and neighbours who lived in their shadows. It divided the community. It divided it completely. Yeah. Very sad, especially in a farming community. They're usually close-knit. Everybody helps everyone else. I have letters that I have written directly to the Premier. In her desperation, Sandy tried to contact the Premier of Ontario, Dalton McGinty. I said that we had been suffering very serious health problems since the turbines began generating. The mysterious health problems only got worse. We begged for sleep. February 22nd of 2009, I had heart attack symptoms. I had to go to the hospital. It was the same for Norma Schmidt in her community about 20 minutes north. 12 wind turbines within close range of her home, including one only 450 meters away. A flicker on her front door, a constant reminder. She got progressively sicker and weaker. Nausea, vomiting. The nausea became so severe, um, I eventually went down to 98 pounds. Over time, I just couldn't manage. Her suffering, she says, pushed her to the very edge. Severe depression, and ultimately, I became suicidal. Things got so bad, she was forced to leave her beloved profession. I love nursing. A nurse is what I am. It's the gift God gave me. 
I had the dream career of teaching nursing students. Dream, dream career. Nursing students are just the best thing on earth. Her health, her life in peril, Norma's doctor advised her to leave her home, the home she loved. Norma's world crumbled. So I begged them to buy me out. And I really thought I could walk away. But I kept coming back. And I kept coming back. And it was like ripping my heart out, my heart and my soul. It, it's not a house, it's not four walls. It's the place we buried our pets. It's the place my tulips are out there, my four, my five-year-old. Planted when there were tiny dots. It's memories that I wanted to carry to my grandchildren. It's my heart and my soul that I've left behind here. And now I'm in a room in my daughter's house. That's not my home. That's not my heart and soul. I'm in a town where I don't want to be. This is where I want to be, where I choose to be, where I choose to live, where my life is. How dare they make me leave my home, my life, what I choose to have. How dare they? They've no right, but yet the government gives them to right, the right. They give them a card blanche. It's not acceptable in Ontario. We lost our property. That sickening sense of loss was also like a punch to the gut for Sandy McLeod, as she too was forced to leave her beloved home. And it's not just here, in communities around Lake Huron, where we found stories of people getting sick and of residents battling big wind projects. We found similar stories all across the province, to the southeast, along the shores of Lake Erie, in a tiny town of Clear Creek. We found an 84-year-old woman who planned to spend the rest of her life in her dream retirement home, only to be forced out when the wind turbines went up. This is what Stefana Johnson sees from her kitchen window. Oh, okay. This is the home she had built, where she had planned to live the rest of her life. Then a wind power project came to her community. All 18 of them within three kilometers. That is a, a huge impact on, on a community. Sometimes it sounded to me as I was trying to sleep and I could hear a rumbling sound. Uh, uh, well, I thought it was a train, but it wasn't. It was just the turbulence from the wind turbines. And other times it sounded like a 747, just hovering overhead for hours on end. And just like those in other wind projects, Safana too began experiencing health problems. And I would lie in bed and I would feel the vibrations in my intestines and think, what on earth is happening? There are times when I actually feel sick to my stomach and I feel like bringing up. I feel real nausea, just horrific. And there are times when I feel very dizzy. And this is one time I fell. I, I lost all control of my body. I just, just lost. And like Norma, Stefana now only visits her old home. We've spent a hundred years almost developing this property. Back up near Lake Huron, farmer Sean Drennan looks out at land that's been in his family for generations. Land that may soon be surrounded by a forest of towering turbines. One on this side, two over here, between here and the lake, I'm thinking there'll be 10 to 12 of the 140. We'll probably be able to see most of them. There's almost nowhere in our township that's actually Cost safe. The Drennan's dining room looks more like a war room as he fights his own battle against the next wave of mega wind projects slated for this area, including a giant one on his doorstep. Farms everything to us. If they are allowed to build, 
we'll leave. Like it's 140, 50 story buildings. You don't even have that in Toronto. The degradation that's gonna go on here. We're talking 1800 turbines up and down the shoreline. We're probably some of the most productive land in all of Ontario. Like my God, uh, what are you people thinking? He's seen what happened with the earlier wind turbine projects. The Ripley project was built, and then we started hearing about people that were gagged, totally gagged on health. And we started to get a little worried. He's seen the destruction to the social fabric of a community. It has totally taken families apart. And now sees it in his own community. Really what's happened is community destruction. After years of fighting, legal challenges, review tribunals, community meetings, Sean saves his harshest words for the Liberal government and its obsessed wind power push. Ask us if they th we think it's a good idea. Don't tell us from your condo that it's a wonderful idea and this, you know, okay, the green thing is so great that, you know, we're gonna force it on you. Drennan says the wind energy rush just doesn't make sense. Seeing as we don't need the power, um, we're not sure why the, why the Ontario Liberal government is rushing towards wind power. It's really hard to be here. It's so hard to be here. Sandy McLeod stops by her old home and instantly she is taken back to her darkest days. There it goes. Yep. You hear the roar, it goes whoosh, whoosh. That's awful. It should never happen. It should never happen. 